Surexit Dominus Vere, Alleluia. Como sono belle sui monti, i piedi del messaggero che annuncia la pace, che regga la buona novella che proclama la salvezza, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Amen. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Padre Santo, che hai reso grande il beato benedetto per l'adente amore alla croce e al ministero della parola, concedi a noi di seguirne gli esempi vivendo in questo mondo con pietà, giustizia e sobrietà. Per nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Figlio, che è Dio, e vive regno con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him, they fulfill the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second Psalm, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him. With trembling, rejoice. I am the way, the 
truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, but I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. If there was one phrase in Scripture to help us get through life, it would be these first sentences of our Lord Jesus Christ today. Today's Gospel is chapter 14 from Gospel of John, verse 1 through 6. 14.1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith also in me. Oftentimes the Lord said, do not fear, do not be afraid. Over and over again he repeats that phrase and you can find it from the New, Old Testament to the New Testament, that constant refrain of our Lord of do not be afraid. But today it's a little bit different, a little nuanced. Not just do not be afraid, but do not let your hearts be troubled. Oh, if we sat down and write the list of things that trouble us, we could probably fill about four volumes of books. There are so many things in this life that trouble us, whether it be the small stuff, like things that happen within the marriage or things that happen within the family, the extended family at the workplace, Expand it out to the city, expand it out to the state and the country, expand it out to the world. Boy, we could fill volumes and volumes of things that trouble us. And our Lord is telling us to burn those books of all our list of things that trouble us. There is need to act when certain th situations arise and we need to act and we need to judge at that moment with the grace of God and guided by the Holy Spirit what to do in those moments to act in prudence, to act with wisdom and understanding, to act with courage, using those sevenfold gifts of the Spirit to respond to situations, like when there are difficulties in marriage, or difficulties in the family, or difficulties in the state, or in the country, or the world, to assess what things we can actually do, and what things we can't, that's appropriate, but not to do it with a troubled heart to do it in a context of prayer, to do it in a context of relying on the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit. If there are troublesome things happening within the marriage, well then there's a need to rely on the gift of prayer, to turn to our Lord and to pray for those necessary graces to address them in the most appropriate way and to pray for an influence of those sevenfold gifts to take care of that situation and then to do one's best at it, let the Lord take the rest. Same thing when it comes to family or extended family or the state or the world, to sit back and really pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for that true discernment of how to address this situation, to pray for the gift of understanding, to really understand what's happening, what's underneath it, to pray for that wisdom of God, to truly have that eyesight of God into the situation to pray for that gift of knowledge, of how to respond, and the grace of prudence to respond in a way most appropriate, with courage. Certain things may take speaking, 
Certain things may take silence. Certain things may take action. Other things may take penance. Some things may say, okay, work quickly. Others, wait and be patient. The Holy Spirit, when we open our hearts to his working in our lives and invite him into those troublesome things, takes care of the situation when we invest ourselves in him. It may not work out the way we think it should work out when we do our part, but we have to leave it to the Lord at that point to work it out the way he knows it should be best taken care of. And then to trust in him. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God, have faith also in me. Those beautiful words of the divine mercy come back to us. Jesus, I trust in you. Well, we can think of the other words, blood and water gushing forth in the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. That love and mercy that pours forth from his heart, that uh, blood and water, symbolic of his love for us, his mercy for us. In the midst of those situations, to call upon the love and mercy of God in those troublesome times, to find rest and to trust, knowing that he loves us, knowing that he will have mercy on us as we attack these various things that are around us and rise to the occasion, not to let our hearts be troubled. This world is a passing world. Our home is not here. I've said this a number of times in these past few weeks, that remembrance of the fact that we are, have a dual citizenship and our main citizenship is in heaven. And we know this because our Lord Jesus Christ tells us today in the gospel that he prepared a place for us in the kingdom of heaven. And even asks us, he says here, um, if, it, if there were not, he says, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? I.e., are you calling me a liar? <laughs> Do you really think I told you that and I don't mean it? I mean it. In my Father's house there are many places and I'm going to prepare a place for you and I will come back and take you to myself. That when we face the troubles of this world and the troubles of this world are getting more troublesome day by day to remember the fact that although we did our best in cooperating with the grace of God to handle the situations here, placed our trust in Him, we know that in the end we have that rest in him in the dwelling place he has prepared for us in his kingdom. To keep our eyes fixed on the glory of that kingdom. Our saint today, Blessed Benedict of Urbino, lived in the 16th century. And it doesn't matter really what century you live in, the world does not change much. There is sin, and sin brings about all kinds of problems and difficulties. There is pain, there is suffering in every generation of every time. In his time, he had to deal with many sufferings. The death of his mother when he was four, the death of his father when he was seven, having to go live with family who really was kind of very bossy about how the kids would live their lives. Sure, he was connected to nobility and so forth. He had uncles who were cardinals and he had a pretty involved family, but his family wanted to follow that same track. He had a deep heart and love with God, Benedict of Urbino. Truly loved the Lord. He, he didn't like the world and how it was. He didn't like that the court and all of the power and all the, all the stuff that went with it. His family forced him to leave one school that he loved to go to another school where he got his degree in law, uh, both church law and civil law. And a brilliant young man, but <laughs> didn't like it. He even got a job in Rome, in the Roman courts. He just did such a distaste for the world. As he grew in his life of prayer, he knew that his true home was heaven. And when called upon, he did what he had to do, but his heart was in heaven. Eventually, he was able to escape that vortex of his family that kept trying to drag him back into the courts and into power and into money. And he did the complete opposite by becoming a Franciscan, a Capuchin, the most uh, austere order there was scared the daylights out of, their fa out of his family because of the order he was joining and the, the austerity and the poverty of it. And there he truly became himself where he gave his heart to the fullness of God. Called upon many times to face the troubles of this world. He was sent to Bohemia to preach 
against Protestantism and to help the Protestants come back to the faith. Very successful, but had to go through many abuses. But his heart lay, was always resting in God. Coming back to Italy, he spent a lot of time preaching to the common folk and being able to encourage them to stay strong in the midst of their troubles, in the midst of their poverty, in the midst of their daily lives, not to be afraid. And he was able to communicate that grace because he himself was not afraid. He was able to encourage them because he himself had that courage that came from that truth of God's love for him. Eventually, after a long life as a friar, he died with the words, I am going home to God. Like many saints, they die with those lit words on their lips, I'm going home to God. Believing the gospel we read today, that the Father's house, there are many dwellings and our Lord has prepared a place for us. He knew the Lord had prepared a place for him and he was going home to God. As I preach this, I think of little Jose, Luis Jose, who died in um, Mexico in the 19th, 20th century. His last uh, words were, I'm going home as he was stabbed and went to his death, killed by the government, martyred for the faith. Or even most recently, not long ago, the final words of our Holy Father, Pope St. John Paul II. After dragging out his long dying period of, oh, I think two weeks, we were watching the news every day. And his last words were, let me go to the Father's house. Let me go to the Father's house. His last words. My brothers and sisters, today as we contemplate the troubles of this world, and as you think of those troubles, and I think of those troubles, let us rely upon the beautiful words of divine mercy, Jesus, I trust in you. And as this world gets more troublesome around us and crazy around us, let us rely on the fact that we are called to a home that is not here, but in the glory of the kingdom of heaven. And that when we face troubles of this world, to pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to address them in the way that our Lord Jesus Christ would like us to address them, knowing always that he is the way, the truth, and the life. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O coli, Signore, della nostra offerta, e donaci un'esperienza viva del tuo amore, perché su esempio del Beato Benedetto, serviamo al tuo altare col cuore puro e generoso, per celebrare degnamente la tua lode e ottenere i benefici della salvezza. Per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
è veramente cosa buona e giusta, nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza. Lodate e ringraziate sempre Dio onnipotente ed eterno per Cristo nostro Signore. Tu doni alla tua Chiesa la gioia di celebrare la festa di San Benedetto. Con i suoi esempi la sua forza, con i suoi insegnamenti la amestri, con la sua intercessione la proteggi. Per questo dono della tua benevolenza, uniti agli angeli e ai santi, con voce unanime contiamo la ino della tua lore. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Padre veramente santo, fonte di ogni santità, santifica questi doni con la fusione del tuo spirito, perché diventino per noi il corpo e il sangue di Gesù Cristo, nostro Signore. Egli, offrendosi liberamente la sua passione, presi il pane e rese grazie, lo spezzo. Lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, Prendete e mangiatene tutti. Questo è il mio corpo, offerto in sacrificio per voi. Dopo la cena, allo stesso modo, presse il calice e rese grazie, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, Prendete e bevetene tutti. Questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alianza, versato per voi e per tutti, in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrando il memoriale della morte e resurrezione del tuo figlio, ti offriamo, Padre, il pane della vita e il calice della salvezza, e ti rendiamo grazie per averci ammessi alla tua presenza a compiere il servizio sacerdotale. Ti preghiamo umilmente per la comunione al corpo e al sangue di Cristo, lo Spirito Santo ci riunisca in un solo corpo. Ricordate, Padre, della tua Chiesa diffusa su tutta la terra. Rendila perfetta nell'amore, in unione con il Papa Francesco, il nostro Vescovo Roberto e tutto le ordine sacerdotali. Ricordati dei nostri fratelli. Fratelli, che si sono odonamenti, tati, nella speranza della resurrezione, e di tutti i defunti che si affidano alla tua clemenza, a metterli a godere la luce del tuo volto. Di noi tutti abbi misericordia e donaci di aver parte della, alla vita eterna, insieme con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di, di Dio, la tua sposa San Giuseppe, con gli Apostoli e tutti i Santi, che in ogni tempo ti farò graditi, e in Gesù Cristo tuo Figlio cantaremo la tua gloria. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Dice il Signore, chi rimani in me e io in Lui, fa molto frutto. Alleluia. Let us pray. O Dio, fonte di consolazione e di pace, guarda a noi tuoi fedeli, riuniti nella festa del Beato Benedetto, e celebrare le tue lode, e per la partecipazione a questi santi misteri, donaci il pegno della redenzione eterna, per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Thank you for indulging me as I said Mass in Italian today. It kind of helps me keep my Italian up while I have the books on the Italian saints in Italian. Uh, tomorrow, this afternoon, remember, at 3 o'clock, we have the Divine Mercy Holy Hour at 3 o'clock, praying for the end of abortion. And so 3 o'clock, Divine Mercy Chaplet and some other prayers, uh, and then some quiet time for an hour at 3 to 4 o'clock today. Please feel to join us every Friday. Tomorrow is first Saturday, so we will have Mass in the morning after communion. There's 15 minutes of silence to meditate on the 15 mysteries of the Rosary, as Our Lady asked. Then after Mass is Rosary. We have our pro-life uh, meeting tomorrow uh, after the Rosary, so feel free to join us in the church hall for the pro-life meeting. And um, keep in prayers, Michael uh, and us. Uh, because the other girl, Kelsey, who are getting married tomorrow. <laughs> so they're, they're getting married tomorrow at 1.30. And then on uh, Sunday, we keep in prayers our four first communicants who will make the first communion at the 10.30 Mass. And they'll also crown Our Lady as we get everything prepared over there for the crowning of the Blessed Mother uh, on May, for, May 2nd. Uh, for the, so the first communicants will crown Our Lady. I was happy that they were not fighting over who was going to bring give her the crown. One little girl wanted to do it, the other one was happy to let her do it, so it was good. <laughs> so uh, it's beautiful. A quick story, I was once in, um, I was in Philadelphia and, uh, at uh, Chaplain to a high school and decided to have a May crowning, which was kind of odd considering that the church, the school was 60% non-Catholic. And I asked one of the sophomore girls to uh, crown Our Lady, and she started crying and crying. I said, what are you, why are you crying so much? She said. When I was eight years old, I was supposed to crown Our Lady on my first communion, but I twisted my ankle, I couldn't do it. And so she brought this special pillow to carry Our Lady's crown with, and it was beautiful. But she was in tears because she wanted to do it when she was eight years old, and now at 16, she was uh, asked to crown Our Lady. So how beautiful. Um, so. so we'll have that at the 1030 Mass on Sunday. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed and holy day. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.